Hey guys, this is a real life video review of the Nikon Z8 full frame mirrorless camera. I'm going to go through the specifications, the autofocus performance, the quality of the images, the high ISO and dynamic range performances. Also with viewfinder recordings, I will take you with me into a bunch of real life situations such as portrait photo sessions during day and night, a yoga photo shooting and of course no review video could be complete without taking photos of cute dogs. In this video I'm going to use the 28 to 75 mm lens and this gigantic 85 mm f1.2 S lens. Now let's start the review. Let's dive right into the build quality of the Nikon Z8. I just love how Nikon puts it. They say it is 30% smaller and 25% less expensive than the Z9. Instead of just saying, guys, we just chopped off the huge vertical grip from the Nikon Z9. Because the Nikon Z8 is essentially a Nikon Z9 minus the vertical grip. That means that the Z8 has the same full frame 45 megapixel stacked sensor, which is of course image stabilized. I will be testing this separately, so stay tuned. The Z8 also boasts a staggering 20 frames per second speed, which can even be bumped up to 120 frames per second, albeit this is in JPEG mode only with some cropping, but still it's really impressive. It also features Nikon's new autofocus system, which I find really good and reliable. It tracks human and various animal eyes, but it can be also set for planes and cars. But here's the most amazing innovation that came with the Nikon Z9. The Nikon Z8 doesn't have a mechanical shutter. No moving parts, it's only electronic shutter. In the past, with the electronic only shutter, you might have gotten some weird artifacts when photographing fast moving subjects. However, with the Nikon Z8, they solved this. As you can see, the flying football stays perfectly round. It's not like an X shape as it used to be. Another common drawback of electronic shutter is bending under certain artificial lights. Nikon solved this too. I couldn't see any bending when shooting a neon lit event. A huge advantage of the electronic shutter is that the shutter speed can go down to as low as 1 32 thousandths of a second. This can freeze anything in time. Speaking of shutter speed, another feature I liked is the extended shutter speed option, allowing exposures up to 900 seconds, which is 50 minutes, that can be great for night photographers. If the shutter is electronic only, how do you know if the camera exposed or not? What kind of feedback will it give you? In the menu you can choose a silent mode with obviously no sound at all or customize a sound for feedback. You can have, you can select different options here. The Nikon Z8 has the same solid grip as the Nikon Z9, which I absolutely loved. And for those holding the camera all day with a bigger hand, it's important that your pinky finger won't hang off the grip, so it's much more comfortable to hold. Holding the Z8, even with a hefty lens like the 85mm f1.2, it felt really, really comfortable. Of course, I will not say that I wasn't relieved when I put that thing on the tripod. The rear display is touch sensitive, yes, even the menus, but its mechanism is quite unique. Nikon describes it as a four axis mechanism. You can tilt it up and down, and with a slightly scary movement, you can tilt it sideways too, which is great for vertical competitions. The hinge seems really sturdy. I think this is a great solution for photographers. But for videographers, know that you cannot flip the display into selfie mode, so videoing yourself is not easy and there is also no tele light. And then there is the 3.6 million dot electronic viewfinder. It's huge and a fantastic experience to look into. 
it's completely blackout free, meaning there is no interruptions when you expose. Another thing I loved about the display, pressing the disc button brings up a level that spans the entire frame. I preferred this level to the ones that just appear only in the center. And you can also customize the type of virtual horizon you want to get. But there was something that initially annoyed me about the display. It intelligently rotates the images depending on the camera's orientation. Fortunately, you can turn off the auto rotate info display option in the menu so that the camera won't try to be smarter than you. This way it was just so much better. But here's a feature I really liked. As usual, the display and viewfinder automatically switch when they detect that your eye is there. However, and I would love to see this on other cameras as well, even if you slightly tilt out the display, the switching stops and only the display remains active. This is really useful because with the display tilted up, like when using a tripod, you wouldn't look into the viewfinder anyway, right? So it makes perfect sense that you can only see the display and there's no switching in between. On the side of the body, you will find a dual memory card slots, one for SD cards and one for CF Express Type B cards. Also big kudos to Nikon for not messing with their existing customers regarding the battery. The Nikon Z8 uses the same battery as the Z5, Z6, Z7. I know that there will be lots of questions about battery life, but this is very hard to measure precisely. All I can say is that after a summer day when shooting 400 photos, this much battery was left. Many people might be concerned, like what's going to protect the sensor if there is no mechanical shutter in front of it? Firstly, the shutter never really protected the sensor because even with older Nikon Z and other cameras, the sensor was exposed when you took the lens off. Secondly, the shutter isn't meant to protect the sensor. The shutter mechanism, it's a delicate, expensive component of the camera and it can be easily damaged if you accidentally touch it. But the Z8 has a sensor shield that can be activated in the menu. When the camera is turned off, the shield automatically covers the sensor, reducing the chance of getting it dirty when changing lenses. Beside the Z mount, you will find two customizable function buttons to which you can assign different functions in the menu. And also you can assign almost any customizable functions to almost any button on the Nikon Z8. I really like how much you can personalize your camera. All right, all right. There is also a small difference on top of the Nikon Z8 compared to the Z9. Although both have a status display on the right, which by the way, even with the camera turned off, shows what car you have in it and how many photos you have space on it. The Nikon Z8 lacks a separate release mode dial. Instead, you need to press the release button and turn the control dials to select different release modes. The same goes for white balance and program modes. On the side of the Z8, there's a proper HDMI port, a microphone input, audio output. This is really useful for videographers and two USB-C ports one of which is for power delivery, that is charging, and the other for data transfer. And near the ports, at the bottom corner, there is a button solely for AF control. This is the only button you cannot customize. Pressing this button and rotating the front control dial allows you to select the AF mode, so it can be single, continuous, or manual. And with the real control dial, you can pick your desired AF area mode. This can be sport, various wide field options, 3D tracking, and my favorite, the customizable wide field option. You can define the rectangle size with the arrows, and then the camera's autofocus will search for the subject only within this rectangle. But I must admit, I mostly use the full automatic AF area mode, where the camera selected the subject automatically, as this worked really well almost all of the time. For instance, here you can see that my girlfriend is standing in not so much light and the camera easily finds her, her eyes even from quite a distance. 
and it usually focused on her eye which was closer to me and I could switch to the other eye if I wanted to. And even with the 85mm f1.2 lens, the focus was precisely on the eyeball and not slipping onto the eyelashes. The Z8 also reliably focused on animal eyes. I tested its accuracy on two different dogs. And I was quite ruthless with the testing because I used the 85mm f1.2 at f1.2, meaning that the depth of field was very narrow. With this big white dog, sometimes it mistook the nose for the eyes, but most of the shots came out just as I wanted. As always, don't forget to download some of these full res raw photos at the first link under the video. And then, as I walked along the Danube, I found a hyperactive border collie. The Nikon Z8 tracked its eyes really well. But the real surprise came when its owner called the dog from a distance. Not only did the Z8 find its eyes while running, it also tracked the fast moving dog at f1.2, meaning the focus plane was very narrow. It's astounding how out of 30 photos, the focus was perfectly spot on the eyes on 29 frames. So there was only one miss. What do you think about that? Is this acceptable or not? Let me know down in the comments. I also tried the 120 frames per second mode on this Border Collie. And here the camera allows only JPEGs, so no RAWs, and it crops into the sensor a little bit. Almost all the photos had the dog's eyes in focus. This is amazing. So what you see here is not a video, these are individual photos but put together into a video. So you would be able to use any of these frames as normal photos. Of course you can set not only human and animal eyes as subjects, but you can also set cars and airplanes. I admit that I haven't tested these and the airplane option is quite a funny one. How the tracking autofocus behaves when the subject gets behind an obstacle, this can be customized within only a single menu item. So heads off to Nikon for creating such a straightforward menu, not overwhelming us with, not overwhelming us with incomprehensible options like Canon does. Let's look at some more practical photos. Here we photographed a yoga wear clothing designed by my girlfriend and we photographed this on a yoga instructor. I used f2.8 on with the 28 to 75 millimeter lens to get stronger background blur without getting too close. I shot around 60 70 millimeter focal length. I am absolutely satisfied with these photos. Sure, the lens could be a tad bit sharper, but this is more than enough for professional work. And given its small size and relatively low cost, we cannot really have too high expectations. Unfortunately, this lens doesn't have a built-in image stabilization, but the Nikon Z8 sensor itself is stabilized and the body is relatively large, so its weight makes it easier to handhold long shutter speeds. For example, at the Gellert Square metro station in Budapest, I handheld half a second exposure at 28mm focal length and the image stayed sharp. Okay, this was not always successful, like here you can see some blur, but I could easily handhold around one tenth of a second at 28mm. Even handholding this lens and filming at 75mm focal length the image stabilization was quite effective. This is how a handheld video looks like about the Hungarian parliament building in Budapest. The 85mm f1.2 lens also has no image stabilization, but its weight helps a lot because it's hefty. I could easily hold shutter speeds of 1 tenth, 1 third and even 1.3 seconds. I couldn't believe it, but yes, this is a 1.3 second long exposure hand held. After this, I got really ambitious and I even attempted to have a 3 second handheld shot, 
Of course, I couldn't manage to get that right. I absolutely loved using the 85mm f1.2 S lens because even with wide open at f1.2 it's incredibly sharp with minimal chromatic aberration. So you pay extra few hundred dollars for that f1.2 and you use it at f1.2 almost all the time. For instance, during the yoga clothing photo shoot, I use an aperture of f1.2 to separate the model from the background as much as possible. And I must say, the focus was perfectly on the face, even though it didn't always recognize the face from the side, but still the focus was spot on and the details in every image were razor sharp. If you think that this video is useful for you, please press the like button and maybe you can also subscribe to my channel, thank you. The autofocus areas were very pleasing without any distracting in the autofocus highlights like in cheaper lenses. These photos required very little pause processing. This is how a JPEG that came straight out of the camera looked like and this is how I edited the raw files in Adobe Lightroom. So I highly recommend this 85mm f1.2 S lens to those people who make a living from photography and value a beautifully blurred background, for example in full body shots. Now let's look at the high ISO performance of the Nikon Z8. Honestly, this is the part of every camera test where there isn't much new to say. These sensors produce very clear images even at relatively high ISOs, so there's hardly any difference between an ISO 800 and an ISO 100 shot, and at a smaller size, the ISO 6400 or 6400, as we would say in Europe, it doesn't look much different from ISO 100. The JPEG images produced by the Z8's default settings were also very good, though I prefer shooting in RAW format. Speaking of RAW format, you can choose three different compression modes. First, there is the lossless compression. This offers the best image quality in theory. And there are two types of lossy compression settings. Though the term lossy compression might sound scary, I noticed almost zero difference between the images, even at high magnification even after significant post-processing, you cannot really tell them apart. I recommend that you use the lossy compressed RAW format as it has less than half the file size. Let's move on to the dynamic range test. Here I deliberately underexposed an ISO 100 shot and then I test how many stops I can push it back in post-processing. Even a plus 4 stop increase in exposure was a piece of cake for the Nikon Z8 and unfortunately I forgot to test the 5 stop increase but it seems that it wouldn't have much trouble with that either. So the Nikon Z8 handles noise at high ISOs really well and tolerates underexposures beautifully. Now let's see the video performance of the Nikon Z8. It has everything that is possible in 2023. For example, you can get 8.3K, yes, that's 8.3K resolution at 60, 60 frames per second in RAW video format. And it also handles standard 4K resolution at 120 frames per second. In terms of codecs, it has everything you can imagine. It's, it's got Nikon's own RAW format, which reportedly takes up half the space of the ProRes RAW format. It has 10-bit H26... Uh, oh my god, these letters. <laughs> it has 10-bit H265 normal and analog tone curves. And of course, there's standard 8-bit video too. 
Like on other Nikon cameras, you need to turn the mode selector switch into video mode, that's when you can record video, and naturally it has the same eye tracking autofocus in video mode as you get in photo mode. Overall, I recommend the Nikon Z8 to those people who value speed, high resolution, precise autofocus and full functionality even with an electronic shutter and the whole thing packaged into a professional, durable camera body with a good grip. Basically, I recommend this everybody who needs a professional camera but not wanting to carry around a brick like the Nikon Z9. It is also an excellent choice for professional videographers because of the available RAW codecs and 8K capability. So what do you think of the Nikon Z8? Would you buy it? Do you think it's too expensive? Let me know down in the comments. And also, if you'd like to know the best tricks and tips for any Nikon Z camera, check this video out. And if you'd like to see why I'm mostly using aperture priority mode, check out this video. But don't go there just yet. Make sure to subscribe to my, to my channel and also hit the like button. I'll see you over there. See you soon and all the best from Hungary.